Hi. Good morning. Happy Sunday, fun day. We're together again. <laughs> okay, so as usual, we do talk about chickens because a lot of people have chicken questions, but it is a homesteading channel, so we like to talk about other things as well just because there's so much involved in homesteading. It's so exciting. So many things going on in homestead. And the exciting part is everybody's homestead is different. And that is what makes it so enjoyable and just, you never get sick of it because there's just endless possibilities on a homestead. So, you know, of course, there's a lot of questions, things to talk about and variety, which is very nice. We like that. Okay, so the topic today are like chickens that don't get along. We like to talk about that because that can cause a lot of problems in the coop. And you don't want problems in your coop. That's the last thing you want because you just want peace, peace and quiet. You're on your homestead. You moved out to the country for a reason. You want peace and quiet, enjoy that lifestyle. So the last thing you want to do is look over there and just see chaos, fighting, squawking, chasing, and just drama. It's, you're just going to sit there for a minute watching that and you're just going to feel like you got to do something about it. And really you do because if it goes on, it just leads to bigger problems. So it's, you just sit there like, oh, it's a problem because really it is. So a lot of times the way to avoid that problem is to know about it in the first place and then just don't get those breeds because there's so many chicken breeds and there's so many awesome chicken breeds. Like you can avoid the breeds that tend to be bully breeds, you know, like aggressive breeds. You can just avoid those. It's so easy to do. It's not a problem. So Think of that in your mind when you're thinking about chickens and then if you already have that problem, I mean, you can either just separate them, you know, some people will just eat them. A lot of the breeds that are aggressive and have a problem are considered dual purpose breeds. The best thing I think is to just not buy them in the first place. That's why we're here today to help you. Yeah, that is just, there's so many nice, wonderful breeds. So if you are in the beginning of your journey, you can just avoid those breeds in the first place. But the good news is if you already have those breeds and you're having a problem, they are considered dual purpose breeds. And dual purpose means they're good for egg laying and eating them. They're good for meat birds and, you know, laying eggs. And a lot of people get them for that in the first place for that reason. They like to keep a dual purpose breed because they do plan on eating them and they do plan on having them for eggs, they'll do both because a lot of the people that want the dual purpose breeds will um, have them for eggs for the first two years when they're really laying really well and they don't have to do too much to keep them laying. And then after that, they'll just eat them because that's kind of what you know they're planning on. So the good news is if you do have that breed and then they're a problem, you can consider eating them. So I'm going to name the first one, which is a Rhode Island Red. <laughs> We've had Rhode Island Reds many times throughout the years. Right. And they are, you know, I, I, I don't want to say they're like, they are good layers. They do like big brown eggs. They are good layers without a doubt. But they are such a physically strong chicken. Like they are a strong chicken that makes them almost like a boxer chicken. <laughs> They're just so physically strong. They can like beat everybody up. And along with that physically strong body, they have that attitude that goes with it. So in a coop, they're just like, yeah, we're the boss. They're the mafia. <laughs> so it can just be a problem. So I just say, unless you have all Rhode Island Reds, you know, it's hard to just, have some Rhode Island Reds in your coop. The problem too though, Rhode Island Reds, they'll, they'll be mean to each other. So you definitely can't have them uh, in a too small of a coop. Yeah. 
So just be careful with that. Like I said, they, you know, they are considered a dual purpose bridge. So you can, you can, um, and here's one, here is one, <laughs> oddly, on the cover of my book. <laughs> the chicken we're telling you not to buy is on the cover of our book. <laughs> they're a nice looking chicken though. I mean, there are, there are good things about them and they're a nice looking chicken. They're a big chicken. They have, you know, nice feathers. They are, um, Lay nice big brown eggs. It's just that attitude. And they not have. so much that you don't, you shouldn't not buy it. Just know what you're getting into when you buy it. Exactly, one. exactly. And if you're a beginner, you know, you might not know how big to make your coop yet. And you're, you know, you're iffy on a lot of things. You know, that might not be the breed that you want to start with. You know what I mean? So just keep it in mind. Just have that in the back of your head when you're thinking about chickens and which ones to pick. And the funny thing is, like, everybody will have them. So it's just a breed that's been around forever. It's a heritage breed. So the funny thing is, they're easy to get because everybody has them. Yeah, if somebody's offering you free chickens, there are probably some Rhode Island Reds in there. Yeah, they're everywhere. Like, easy, easy, easy to get. So that's one reason you can get your hands on them easy. They're out there. They're just everywhere. So, you know, that's another reason a lot of people see them. They're, you know, a lot of people have them. You can get them cheap probably because people are breeding them, you know. So just just be aware of all that, you know. and, and Put the eggs right here so people can see them. Right some, there. some people will have them and say they don't have any problems with them, you know. Um, and... So I, I do say sometimes, I don't know if that's like different areas of the country, you know, don't overbreed them or they're not inbred as much or something, you know, different country. I don't know. Well, it's just I the Rhode Island Reds, like that. you said, though, they are a tough, they're a tough breed. And so the, the point is today that don't mix them with a, a gentle breed or too many together because they're a tough breed. So yeah. Yeah. You know, be, you know what you're getting into. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the second breed? Now, it's my turn. You said one. Now, I'll say okay. one. Okay. The second breed that doesn't get along well with others is the Bard Rock. Yeah. They're, and here's the problem with them. They're a very beautiful chicken to look at. So they're, cute. They're um, all, all black with white spots or all white with black spots, depending on how you want to look at it. Checker looking, kind of. They look like checkers. Which we had one named checkers. But they are probably meaner. Like, if you want to just say mean, I think the Rhode Island Reds are tough, but the Bard Rocks, I would say, are mean. You want to tell them about the like Bard Rocks? Like, Rhode Island Reds, Reds are like um, the Mafia. Um, yeah, Bard Rocks have the big, they're checkered, and then they have like red on them. So they're like flashy. They're so cute. <laughs> they're like, you see them, you're like, oh, that is so cute and so beautiful. Like you, they catch your eye. They are flashy, cute, cute chickens. But they are little stinkers. They will actually just, they like look for the opportunity to attack. They're so funny because they seem like they hang back a little bit. And you're just like, oh, he seems like he's like back at the edge. And then all of a sudden they just see the opportunity and they just go in there and attack, you know? You can, and I'm not trying to crowd you out. You look, you can put the book right there. People can see it. Because the way uh, the camera is, people can see right on the table now. Okay. We've got to show your eggs off. You know how people who, people who review wristwatches, they'll do a wristwatch check. We've got to do <laughs> a egg check and show your eggs yeah these are funny i love i love how big these eggs get they're just so funny like you can't even close the lid and clip it because the eggs are too big <laughs> this right here is my guinea egg look at the difference when but you I, got a guinea hen laying eggs as good as a hen chicken you're doing something you right. can almost drop this on this table and it wouldn't break i'm like hitting it and hitting it and hitting it and i'm just like and they eat the same food <laughs> It's like iron around this egg. We got a $5 super <laughs> chat from hot stuff in my something. <laughs> I got a Rhode hot stuff. I got a Rhode Island Red white rooster. He is a sweet boy. Do oh. Whites tend to be the same attitude as reds. Evidently not because that that's interesting. I have never seen a white Rhode Island Red rooster, so that sounds beautiful to me. 
And um, wow, because I find those Rhode Island Red Roosters are the meanest roosters. I recommend don't even get a Rhode Island Red Red Rooster because they just seem to be like such mean roosters. I won't even like usually consider a Rhode Island Red Rooster. So awesome. If you get a good rooster though, I mean, I'm not saying there's not a good Rhode Island Red Rooster out there, but if you get a good road, a good rooster, they're awesome. They're just so cute. So maybe the whites are different. So I don't have experience with the whites. I only have experience with the reds. So I can't speak for the whites. So I'm good for you. Do you want to tell everybody about the? So we were talking about Bard Rocks. That's our second breed that doesn't get along well. Do you want and we to had a rooster too. Talk about that. What a stinker! Yeah, what a stinker. We had we had um. A barred rock rooster, mm -hmm. a miniature. It was a bantam. And he cute. was so cute adorable. It was the cutest thing you've ever seen. Yes. But he had, he was so mean. And then he was mean to Dum Dum, our big white rooster, who's big and huge. And he was beating him up. And so we had to, uh, we had to get rid of the barred rock rooster. We had to find him a new home. In the sky. <laughs> But I mean, you know, when you live on a farm and you have a farm, that's what happens sometimes. You know what I mean? You just have to be willing to realize that's how it works out sometimes, you know, and that is, that's farm life, you know? We have two rules on this homestead. Mm -hmm. You don't, you're not mean to Dan, to, you're not mean to big dumb dumb rooster and you're not mean to Bubby, the, he, the guinea hen. Well, really, we don't like any bully animals. You know, we don't like any mean animals to anybody. That just, nobody wants to live a life where somebody's being mean to you all the time. Like that, nothing's happy like that. You know, where somebody's just every day attacking you, being mean to you. And there's just, there's just a problem with that. You know what I mean? Nobody's happy like that. People aren't happy like that. Animals aren't happy like that. So there's just no way. And, um... I have to admit, in my life, I've had kind of a mean animal, just kind of mean, mean by nature. And then I didn't want to like do the dirty deed and like, you know, put it down or pay to have it put down and then just do the coward's way and try to give it away to somebody else, like give my problem to somebody else. And I've seen how that worked out where you do that to like kind of one of your friends, which is kind of a dirty trick. And then you pass that on and then you just see how it goes to another farm and does the same thing over there, that same problem animal. And then we'll go over to another farm and torture their animals and just do the same thing over there. Just be a, nothing but a problem, attack other animals. And so really an animal like that just needs to be put down is there's just, you know, something wrong with it now i'm talking humanely you know so we got another five dollar super chat from hot stuff <laughs> thank you hot stuff <laughs> oh my name is hot stuff timmy p okay hot stuff timmy p okay thank you <laughs> um so yes sometimes you know and when you're when you're a homesteader and you're a farmer homesteader you know that's what happens sometimes and if you're not that kind of temperament you're not that kind of person then you're just not a homesteader maybe you know what i mean just don't have that lifestyle if you don't have that in you you just can't do that okay so, what's the third breed that's mean i told you i can't i, I what well, you said it already it was it was uh buff orpingtons can be mean well, that's a 50-50 because I've, I, we've had sweet ones where they're just big and poofy and golden. And when you get a golden, they're a gold. We've had the hens. They're just a golden girl. You're just like, oh, you're the best ever. You want those things to live to be 100 because they're so beautiful. Those big golden hens, when you get a good one, you're just like, oh, you are gold. You're just worth your weight in gold. You're beautiful. And you truly want that thing to live forever because, I don't know, they're just so pretty and then some of them are mean and They're you're just divas you're just like how are you mean you look so beautiful and yet you are the meanest thing ever 
and it is so weird. So I don't know. Those might be a little inbred around this. We're in Florida, so I don't know if they're overbreeding them around here. And they're, some of them come out a little inbred, and then they're just got a little screw loose, and they're mean. So you do have to be careful with the. Um, um, <laughs> Buff Orbingtons. Yeah, with the Buff Orbingtons, the buffs. Now, I, I can't speak for the other buffs. I know there's other colors, but the Orbingtons, I mean, you know, but the buffs, you know, you have to be careful. I can't say they're all mean because we have had sweet ones where they're awesome, just awesome. So that for sure is like, you know, that that's a crapshoot. Like that's a 50-50. You're like flipping the coin on those. But if you get a good one, oh my goodness, they're just so pretty. They're worth, that's almost worth flipping the coin on, those Buff Warpingtons, just because they're so, so pretty. You, yeah, like, you just got to keep an eye on them. But yeah, I, like I would never buy Rhode Island Reds, Bard Rocks, and Buff Warpingtons and put them all together in a little coop. Like that would be a recipe for disaster. So what, can, what is that like the roller derby? It would just be like, yeah, so that's what your coupe would look like. We can just <laughs> help people avoid that mistake. Yeah. And then if you're just the type like, okay, I just love the egg production. Everybody talks about the egg production on those Rhode Island Reds. And I just want to try those. Maybe just try two. Just get two. Like if you just have to try those big, big, big brown eggs. From those Rhode Island Reds, you just can't help yourself. You're just curious about that. Like, try two. You know, don't go get 15. Just try two. See how that goes. See how you like it. You know what I mean? In your area, maybe you're like, oh, well, those two turned out pretty good. You know what I mean? Start, just start small. Don't, don't go get 15 because, you know, like I tell everybody, if it turns out to be a disaster and you're like trying to give them away, you're like, hey, you want 15 chickens? Everybody's going to run in the opposite direction and they're going to run from you. They're, nobody's going to want them, you know what I mean? But if you try to get rid of two chickens, you know, you might find somebody and be like, yeah, 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 I'll try two. <laughs> You'd have way better luck than trying to be like, hey, you want 15? You know, nobody, nobody's going to want you. They're going to run from you. So <laughs> we got a message from Amber, our channel member. Hi, Amber. Amber says, good morning, Becky and Scott. Good morning. Have missed the last couple of live sessions. My duck started laying eggs. So yummy. All those duck eggs. Oh, those duck, ducks, lay, ducks are prolific layers. Let me tell you something. They you lay a some, lot. some like French food. Cause doesn't this, French let, food. let me tell you from experience, don't let her hatch all her babies. You will end up with 28 duck babies. And that's, you'll have so many ducks and ducks eat a lot. Ducks eat more than chickens. So you'll have a big, you'll have a big feed bill trying to feed all those ducks. Yeah, it's not a bill, it's a shovel. No, I meant duck, I meant bill also like feed bill trying to go to the feed store and pay to bring all that feed home to feed the ducks. It's a double, it, may, it works both ways. Yeah, yeah, both ways. And also, um, rehoming ducks is not as easy as rehoming chickens. Like, you can rehome chickens easier. Also, it's like trying to get rid of ducks is harder, I found. You know, rehoming ducks is harder than rehoming chickens. So a lot of people will want the chicken eggs. They'll try a couple chickens for the eggs. You can talk them into that or entice them into that. And ducks, people are like, oh, duck eggs. Like even though you'll be like, yeah, they're edible. We eat them all the time. They're fine. Like even with the guinea eggs, like we totally eat them, use them, hard boil them. Can't even t we can't even tell the difference. We don't care. Same with the duck eggs. We used them, ate them. Even when we served them to people, nobody could tell the difference, but they can't wrap their head around that. So you'll be like, yeah, you could eat the duck eggs. People are like, oh, duck eggs? Oh, they're just so leery I about it. I was, I was watching years ago, like over 10 years ago, I was watching a lecture about sales, like how to sell stuff. And the guy says, how come chicken eggs are more popular than duck eggs? And he said, it's because when a chicken lays an egg, she tells the whole world about it. <laughs> you hear about it. And I'm like, that's so true because like, we own chicken. So I knew that was so true. He goes, when a duck lays an egg, it goes, meh. Yep. Yeah. And I was just trying to teach you the importance of sales. You know, like you got to get your message out there. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just learned that about ducks too, though. So they will hatch out so many babies. So what you have to do is just, you know, of course, the eggs are just like chicken eggs where 
you can just go to her nest and like take her egg so she doesn't hatch out 28 duck babies. <laughs> Which has happened if you search Becky's Homestead Ducks, you can find that video. Yeah, of course, it's adorable when she's um, going around. But also, just I don't know if you know this, Amber, Daddy Duck tries to kill duck ba his own babies. Daddy Duck doesn't like his own babies. They reach a certain age. He starts chasing him away and trying to kill him. So ducks can be mean too, because maybe they're one of the breeds that are mean. We should talk about because ducks yeah. can be very mean. So if you have them in like a a cage or a coop or something, it reaches a certain age where the daddy attacks his own babies. So what you have to do is get daddy out of there and let mommy stay with the babies. You gotta get daddy out of there. Amber says, "Happy Sunday, Bun Day." Oh, thanks. <laughs> Tell, tell me everybody about your your bun technique. My bun technique? Your, your new and improved bun technique. What's that? Where I just... How you did it different. I just did it bigger. That's all. I don't want to talk about my bun technique. Yeah, people, YouTube, people love you talking about <laughs> hair and makeup and everything. He's so weird. It's like, that's the last thing I want to talk about. <laughs> It's my bun technique. Well, it's Sunday bun day. You don't want to talk about the bun? Not really. Tammy, our channel member. Hi, Tammy. Says, so true about the buffs. They are sweet to us, but stinkers to the other hens. Yes, yes, yeah. And that's they what we're are. talking about today because it's not like the yeah. chickens are going to attack people. Right, right. Gonna, this is talking about them being mean to each other. Right, right. Not that they're mean to us, like us, people. Yeah. They're mean to other people. I mean, <laughs> the people, they're chickens, you know. We got a 999 super chat from Amber. Thank you, Amber. It's the lemon giving oh, love. I love I love lemons. I have my lemon tree out there. Oh, I do have to tell people, which I have little videos I'm gonna start putting up that I'm taking at Homestead Park while I'm working. I almost did a backflip. Now, if you could picture me trying to do a backflip, of course, that's ridiculous. But I almost did one the other day because <laughs> I was working on Homestead Park and I noticed my pecan trees have nuts on them. I am overjoyed. I did a little video and I, I thought I erased one of them though, but oh my gosh, I'm so happy with my pecan trees. I don't know much about them because I've never had one, but I've always wanted them. And of course there's two over there that are like, I, they must be a hundred years old. They're huge. And they weren't, they didn't look like they were producing well. There wasn't much around. They weren't, they're not cared for for years and years and years. So I just read everything I could about it on many, many sites. And there's no power over there yet. You know what I mean? So I don't have a hose or, you know, anything. So. I just cleaned up as much as I could underneath, chopped down all these baby trees of different varieties that were growing, got all the dead branches and stuff, just trimmed a little, mowed, tried to fertilize the best I could, what they told me to do. And then just, I'm like watching and I'm like, oh, they're two of the same variety. And it said, you need a different variety. So they cross pollinate through the wind. And I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm going to have to get a different variety so they pollinate. I'm like, maybe they're not going to have nuts. I'm like, I don't know. says it needs a different variety within a, a mile. So I'm like, well, I don't know if there's a different variety within a mile because it's like all woods, but there must be. There's nuts on my trees. And I'm just like, yay. I'm so happy about that. So I'm just, I don't know. That just thrills me. That's why I'm a true homesteader at heart. Like, I just can't help myself. So I have my little lemon tree. Now I'm going to have my pecan trees producing. I'm just like, any little homestead thing, I'm so happy. Like the simplest little stuff, you know. My chickens. I'm just going to, you know, keep going, of course. <laughs> I'm building a little barn over there. From Well, it's not really a barn barn. It's just like a run-in, you know, little run-in barn for my horses right now but there's still no like power on over there but so. i'm and we are filming everything we're trying to film the best we can so i filmed and we what yeah. we did is there was an old power pole there from i think there was a mobile home on the property and there was the old power pole there in good good condition and we just had the tractor come to widen the driveway so they could get the log cabin in and while the guy's there I was going to dig up the old power pole and try to move it or you know, just at least just dig it up. 
And so I'm digging and digging and digging. And I, they must have buried it with like rocks I don't around it. Anymore. And I'm like, oh, this is gonna this is gonna take five years off my life trying to dig this up by hand. So <laughs> I went over there and talked to the guy with the tractor and I said, Can you pull this out of the ground with your tractor? And he looks at it, and he's like, Oh yeah, we can pull that out no problem. And they came over with that tractor and they just pulled it out of the ground like a toothpick. Just boop, just pulled it out of the ground. And then we moved it over to the new hole, which I had already dug. And I'm like, oh, you gotta have, you gotta get the tractor for some things. This guy, this guy told money. me it was like pulling a toothpick out of a hamburger. It was <laughs> like, just so easy. <laughs> so we're gonna get the power turned on next. Yeah, and it is a little hard to film over there, even though we have the equipment and stuff. But I mean, it is so hot, and we're like sweating to death over there. You know, there's no water, so I try to bring my cooler. We're like dumping water on us, sweat dripping in our faces, and. You know, it is August and it's just like, whew, you know, we are working physically very hard, everything we're doing over there, so. Amber says she uses the uh, duck eggs for baking and oh. she doesn't have any boy ducks, so. Oh, I see. And she says the bigger the bond, the better. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's so funny, I show my sister, I'm like, is this big enough or should I go bigger? Well, I can only go bigger when my hair grows a little bit. You know what I mean? I started out with a smaller bun and then my hair grew a little bit. So I made the bun a little bigger and then my hair grew a little bit. I like made the bun a little bigger, so. We got a $5 <laughs> super chat from Carol. Hi, Carol, thank you. And Carol says, thank you for your videos and your book. Oh, you're welcome. I hope it helps people to, you know, learn and encourage people to homestead. I been, been a huge help. I have four chickens laying at four months old. Yes, they. I, I don't know what breed, but I bet you they're a hybrid breed because those are the ones that usually start laying younger. You know what I mean? The heritage breeds, which are the old purebred chickens, those usually lay a little later, like six to ten. You know, six, eight, ten months old. But the hybrids, which are the mixed breeds, they usually start laying earlier. But whatever, they're both good. They're both good, you know what I mean? So, great, awesome. Nothing like fresh eggs. I, I think it's so funny because, um, you know, Scott's staying here now while we're making the move over there because he already sold his house. And I get so many eggs and I'm like, you know, what am I gonna do with these eggs? So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna make egg salad. So I'll take one of these containers, which is a dozen and a half. I will boil the whole thing. I finally, after all these years, learned how to peel fresh eggs easy because it's always been a nightmare and I absolutely despise, and I do mean despise, peeling eggs because it's so frustrating. I just won't do it. It just gets me so mad and so frustrated. I just won't do it, but I figured it out. Uh, I have to get a big pot. I boil them in the pot, cool them down. Doesn't matter, they can be just laid perfectly fresh eggs. Boil them, cool them down, you can put the cold water in there, leave them, I gotta put this book down. Leave them in the big blue pot, it has full water, they're cold now, you know, they could be slightly warm. Go in there, crack the egg, you know, just on the edge of the pot, peel them under water. <clears throat> You have to just peel it underwater. So I kind of like roll the egg so it, you know the shell's kind of all um, you know cracked all the way around, and then I just keep my hands under the water with the egg under the water, and I peel it underwater. Ta-da! That is how you have to peel fresh eggs underwater, and of course the water gets like um, a little bit like murky looking. But who cares? Like whatever. And then that egg's like wet and peeled, and then I just have the bowl, and then I just put the egg in the bowl and just do, I do like a whole dozen and a half. And then I just, you know, I just make egg salad out of that. <clears throat> but here's the thing, Scott eats the whole bowl. I can't even, like by the time I even get some, he eats it all. What are you talking about? Do you have, I was gonna say, do you have anything to say for yourself about that? What, just hard boiled eggs? I don't eat that many hard boiled eggs. No, you eat the whole bowl of potato, egg salad. The Not whole in one sitting, like over like three or four days. Yeah, but he eats a whole dozen and a half of eggs worth of egg salad. But like over four days. That's not that crazy. I think that's crazy. <laughs> Do you have anything to say for yourself? I just said, I'm like, I don't think eating that many <laughs> 
egg, all that much egg. It's not like I'm eating other stuff with it. It's just egg salad and nothing else. I, I guess he doesn't care. I guess he doesn't feel guilty about that. If I ate it in one sitting, I think that would be, I have a problem. <laughs> I just think that's a lot of egg salad. I guess I think it's more because I have to peel all those eggs and I know how many there is. But I guess once it's already made into a bowl, like... You don't know how many eggs that is, so you're just like, hmm, egg salad, and he just eats it. See, everybody's defending me. They are? Get out! I guess also, but he's not eating bread with it, because, you know, we don't eat that much carbs, you know what I mean? So, it's not like he's making these big sandwiches. He's, like, kind of just eating that with meat or something else, cheese. Well, you could eat three eggs in one sitting, so that's not that crazy. Or you could eat it doesn't have half of egg salad. If you had that twice salad. a day, that's six eggs a day. That'd be two days. Okay. It's not that crazy. I just think that's so much. Because then I make it again. Then I just keep making that again well, okay. and again. Okay, I won't and eat again. it and you can just sit there. No, in the you fridge. can eat it. I'm glad you, I'm glad you enjoy it. <laughs> I just, but anyway, it's good that we have a homestead and we have lots of eggs and we can make so much egg salad. Plus, I love to give eggs to James too, my other son. Tell everybody where to buy your book. Okay, so I have these two books because I also, okay, so Scott always puts a link at the end of the video or no, in the description of the video. So I like to tell people, click the link and you can just look at it. That doesn't mean you're buying it. When you click the link, that's not like making you buy it any, you know, you're not obligated to buy it. You're not committed. You can just look at it, see how much it costs, you know, see. And then if you don't want to, who cares? You just go away. You know, you're not committed. I like to just make sure people know that because, you know, a lot of times people are afraid to click it because they're like, oh, I don't want to, you know, commit. And I'm the same way. It's like, I like to investigate stuff. I never like to commit at first. I like to investigate everything. I'm not the type to just jump in. Like, I want to investigate first. <laughs> so I like to tell people that. You can investigate. You don't, you're not committed. <laughs> just in case, you can check it out. Okay, so I like to also show this book too because I love to talk about this. It is thrilling to buy property. And to start a homestead, you know, if you think you want a homestead, and I like to push homesteading because it's so awesome. It is so wonderful, so awesome. Just, <clears throat> excuse me, just getting out of a neighborhood. You know what I mean? Just getting out of a, a house, 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 house. <clears throat> getting out of that living condition and getting just out into a little more privacy changes your life. It's just so tranquil, so awesome. It's, it's healthy for you. I, I think five acres is the perfect size because mm -hmm. we're not weirdos. We don't need to live on the moon. Right. We don't, we don't need to, you know, be antisocial. Right. But as a homesteader, you want just that... Like we Buffer. said before, my, my lifestyle, my personal philosophy is big yard, tiny house. Right. That's perfection to me. And that's what we're doing. We practice what we preach. Exactly. So we're not, we're not promoting like turning into some weirdos like, oh, you know, go hide, go hide from the world, go get a hundred acres and hide. No, that's not what we're talking about because we honestly think Person to person socializing is so healthy and that's the way people should be. You know, get away from the phones and the computers and people don't even see each other. We don't even think that's healthy. We Speaking think of tiny house, I got a price quote on my steel building. Two steel <clears throat> buildings. Because we're going to do a barn first as a practice run. And then I'm going to do my mm -hmm. actual house. Yeah. Little, little. Oh, well, okay. So we do like this book about land for people that think, you know, like what we're talking about right now, what we're describing might feel good to them, might sound good to them. So of course, you know, this is what we talk about. It's like, this is what we, I always preach, if you want to say, this is what I talk about because, you know, I do think that's very good for people. And I can't tell you the countless people 
that tell me, you know, write to me, which I love, and say, oh, you know, we just moved, we just bought our land, or we're gonna buy our land next month, we're closing next month. You know, you inspired us, you and you know, it just goes on and on. Well, right which... now, everybody's <clears throat> buying rural <throat> land in the country, right now. So prices are going up. Yeah, that just makes me so, so happy. Like, I just am thrilled. I'm just thrilled that I could have any part in just having people, you know, change their life to homesteading. That makes me, just warms my heart. It makes me so happy. So I just wrote the book to try to help people, you know, avoid big mistakes that later they just might be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, like I wish I knew that, you know, like, oh, that was just such a big mistake I could have avoided. And so. we've been doing it for the past, I guess, year now and taking notes. And so the book is even more up to date with what we've just been doing. Yeah, yeah. So we do. We just try to help people come along easier because, I mean, if you can make the process easier, it's just more enjoyable. Just, you know, less hitches, less hiccups. It's just more enjoyable. So, and that's what, that's what it's all about. You know, you're going to homestead to have more joy in your life and just, you know, enjoy yourself more and have a more healthy lifestyle. Like that's what it's all about, so. Amber wants to hear about the steel building. Oh, yes, my sister did too. I told my sister all about it the other day. She was like, tell me about Scott's house. So, okay, well, tell about it, Scott. Well, like I've said before, I'm gonna catch people up because not everybody knows the whole story. Just real quick, that I think right now, today, if you're gonna build your own house, the way to do it is with a steel building house. And actually, the guy who was clearing our trees, he started asking me about it because he said they were looking to build a house. And I said, well, I said, my opinion right now, the best way to do it is a steel building. And the number one reason why is it's not weird mm -hmm. as far as the structure. <coughs> my first house I built myself was weird. And you get questions and worries that the building department, the building inspector stands there looking at it and he's like, what, huh? Mm -hmm. And he has lots of questions and he's like <coughs> nervous. When you're building yourself, you know, if you're rich, you can do any weird house you want. Because your engineer will get that all yeah, settled. You got money. You're rich. Yeah. Any weird, artistic. Angles, mm, windows. Oh, yeah, you got no money. No problem. But when you're like us and you're doing it yourself, you don't, you're not rich. Frugal. You don't want weird. <laughs> yes. Because it freaks out the building Simple. department. And so the great thing about the steel buildings is it's not weird. It's very cut and dry. It's metal beams like this holds the roof up and the building department they're like, oh, okay. Bolted together. Everybody and then the gets inside, it. inside you can frame it out however you want. Because really the building department at the end of the day, they just don't want the roof to cave in on your head. Mm -hmm. It's all they really care about. Mm -hmm. Then the inside you can frame it out, you know, put your bedroom here, put your bathroom there. That's really, they don't really care about that that much, at least in our county. Right. So I called the steel building company and I got a price quote for a, what we're going to do for the barn. And they, they get, now these are just, you know, if you call, you might get a different price. But the price I got was $11,300 delivered with the blueprints. And that was for 20 foot wide by 30 foot long with a single slope roof, which is the shed roof. So that, I thought that was really good price. That's a big, that's like, what, almost 700 square feet. And so, you know, that doesn't include the foundation or the windows or the doors or anything else. That's just the metal structure. But with the blueprints, the blueprints, you got to figure they cost like $5,000. So that's subtract $5,000 just for the blueprints. Now you have to make sure what, now that's for a barn for us, but if you are considering a house, you know, to have that as a house, Make sure what your county requires as a minimum for a house. Every county has a minimum square foot for a house. So you don't want to, you know, say, oh, that'd be perfect for a house in my county. And you call your county and they're like, oh, we have a 1,200 square foot Which minimum for do. a house. And some, some do. do. So make sure because then you'll be like, oh, well, that's not going to work for us in our county where we live. We're going to have to get a price on a steel building for 1,200 square feet. And so you're gonna have to, you know, call around and make, you know. And you don't wanna build, some people will be like, oh, we're gonna sneak and we're just gonna put one up. You know, we'll tell them it's for a barn and we're just gonna make it our house and live in it. That comes back to bite you and I know people that's happened to because later you're like, 
oh, well, my husband got sick. We had to sell. We had to move. Well, we can't. The bank won't give the people a mortgage on it because it doesn't have a CO. Nobody will finance it. So nobody will buy it. They can't get anybody to buy it. So now they're just stuck with it or they have to try to find somebody that'll buy it for cash or they, you know, they got to lower the price for it because they have to buy a, find a cash buyer for it. And then it won't pass inspection. No bank will finance it. It just becomes a big mess. So it's always, always better to do it by the book. It, it benefits you down the road. And that's the, <clears throat> that's the good thing about, <clears throat> excuse me. That's the good thing about the steel building. It makes it easier to do it by the book. That's the whole point. It comes with the stamp blueprints so you can do it by the book. So down the road, you don't know what the future holds. You, you have no idea. You might have to move for whatever reason. Like, don't cut yourself short. You know, you're going through all this trouble anyway. Just do it by the book so it's an investment for yourself. Amber says, great advice, Becky. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, you don't cut yourself short. You're going through all this trouble anyway. Like, it's an investment for the future, you know? And then as far as my actual house, I want my house to be two stories. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a doll house. And I talked to the guy at the steel building company and he said if they do the, the second story, if they do the floor out of the metal beams. The floor joists. He said it's, he said it's uh, $60 a square foot, which would work out to be like $20,000 extra dollars, which I think he was overestimating. I think it might be cheaper than that if you actually get down to like actually ordering it. But even if it was that price, I was thinking about it at first. I was like, oh, 20,000 extra, oh my goodness. But then I'm like, people pay 80 grand for a stupid, you know, SUV or a truck. Exactly. Which is my house. And 20 grand really, it's not that much for your house. And so I think I'm gonna just do it because it'll be the same building, but two stories. Now he, could, he told Scott he could, which of course you could do it wood. But here's the difference. If he did it in the steel, he could get it to span the whole 20 feet. Yeah. So there would be no, you know, pillars down below. So yeah. it could be I a don't want clean, it clean 20 foot downstairs, you know, clean span downstairs with no pillars. And the, you know, 20 foot holding it up, the upstairs. Which, so, and metal beams, which so I'm going to leave cool. exposed. That could be it's so be cool. My hipster, my hipster mansion. I think it's I hate be, when he says that. That is well, just. Because hipsters love all that brick and metal beams. and Like that coffee shop we went to in Orlando, remember? Yeah. And okay, I said, whatever. I said, what my house looked like. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so anyway, I, I think the 20 grand's worth it. I think it's worth it. I mean, 20, 20 grand, you could just buy a car that parks in the driveway. Your house, you live in there. Yeah. You live in your house. You just park the car in the driveway and you just drive it where, whenever. I don't know. To me, I think it's worth it. You know, he, Scott's young. He can and work. I think when we actually I'm like, go work and pay for so it. It's ordering so the building, worth it. it's going to be less than that. And it's a, it's a little house. You know what I mean? It's little. It's not like he's building this big mansion. Well, people you pay $1,200 a month in rent. Yeah, exactly. So how, that's what? 20, not less than 20 months. Rent, yeah, which that goes by quick. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And he's young and healthy. He can work for a little while and pay for it. I think that's fine. I think that's, I totally think you should do it. It's such a great investment. And then as far as like finishing the building out to where it's got windows, doors, insulation, electrical, plumbing, I, I say triple the price of the steel and then add $10,000. So like the barn is eleven. dollars Triple it, add 10000 That's probably what it would cost to like, finish it out. Like, and, and the good thing is, this is the way we like it, and this is the way we recommend to other people. And you can get so excited about this. When it's a little tiny house, I mean, 20 feet, my cabin's 22 feet wide. And my cabin's 38 feet long. So his house is almost going to be the size of mine. A little bit shorter, but then, of course, two stories. But the exciting part about that is... It's so little, you, you're like, it, windows aren't going to cost a fortune because you don't need that many. So it's like you can do nicer windows. So you can have nice finishings, you know what I mean? And you won't spend a fortune. Like, Scott won't spend the rest of his life paying for a house. 
He can have a little house with nice stuff in it and it, he'll be mortgage free. You know what I mean? You just don't have to go overboard. You don't need that much. Like just go small. You'll have everything you need. It'll still be very nice, you know, and you'll have a happier life. That's the key people have to realize. You just see these huge houses out there and you just want to roll your eyes and you're just like, yeah, good luck with that. Like, have a happy life with that. <laughs> it's just, you know, and you just see these stressed out people that are just, they don't look happy. Their expressions on their face don't look happy. Their body language doesn't look happy. And you're just like, is it worth it? Like, is it all worth it? You know, in my and only they can answer that question. You know, every person has to answer that question for their own self. <laughs> it's like, when I answer that question, I'm like, no, that's not worth it for me. <laughs> so, you know, everybody has to answer their own question. <laughs> so we just try to pick, show to people a different way, like the homesteading way. So. And I think that doing the steel building, you're gonna get a lot for, not, for, for less money. And what a sturdy a little building, you yeah, know. Yeah, and then it's, you know, steel. It comes with like a 50-year warranty and, yeah, you know. Not too expensive. <clears throat> and just for us girls, look how easy it is to clean a little house. <laughs> I can whip through my house well, You're going to be over here it. in your log cabin. Hey, you're happily. You're not going to my steel building. Happily. In fact, I tell him, I'm sending Fifi over to his house. I'm like, you take Fifi over there. Him and Fifi like each other. I'm like, take Fifi. Um... I, I just love that a house mover came over here and said my house is like a little battleship. <laughs> That's how good I built it. I, I like that when he said it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So he has his steel building, but my house is a little battleship too. So you're gonna though, because the barn really at the end of the day, at the end of the day is gonna be yours. <clears throat> Mine and Charlie's. <laughs> Charlie doesn't want to stay in the barn, so the barn's mine. I'll just trim his feet in there and brush them and put a saddle on <laughs> so okay well anyway we got a ten dollar super chat from angie thank you angie i, I want wanted... the pair saying number one fan oh angie that's so sweet thank you Mwah. okay so i i did want to do one thing though this touched my heart so much this week i don't know if scott wants to do that but you want to read that sweet, sweet letter we got this week? Where is find it? I'll, I'll find that on my phone. Let me. While you find that, I'll tell people about our our toilet drama we had this oh, week. Oh, okay. <laughs> the toilet here in the log cabin started leaking, and I'm looking at it. And I'm like, where is it leaking from? I thought it was the gasket, <laughs> or where the bolt comes out. I was looking all over, and then I noticed the actual porcelain had a hairline crack, and the water was weeping out of that hairline crack. Crazy. And I was like, that is weird. I've never seen that before. So I had to uh, go and buy a new toilet. And so, uh, not yesterday, but the day before, I installed, I removed the old toilet, which was almost the hardest part, is just removing the old one, and installed a brand spanking new toilet here in the log cabin. But we have to say something. I, I like my low toilet, which sounds weird, but it's low to the ground. I hate the toilets. The new toilets are like literally, like you just back up like, and it's right there. It's like so weird. I'm like, why do they make toilets so high nowadays? Like you don't like sit down on it. So I'm like, I don't want a like, um, you know, a high toilet. I like a toilet, like old fashioned toilets like they used to have when we were little. So I told Scott, please don't come home. And I also, I don't like an oval toilet. I like, I don't want a big like oval a lot of, toilet. A lot, of neat, a lot of demands. So anyway, I like my toilet that I had. So he was going to go get the toilet. And I was like so worried about the toilet he was going to get. So I'm telling him all these things, you know, I measured my toilet and I'm fretting about the toilet he was going to come home with. Then I'm thinking, I don't want him to come home with a different colored toilet either, like a, like a tanny brown toilet. So he finally comes home with, I go, what toilet did you get? And he's like, oh, I got the same toilet that we had. And I said, I didn't say anything. And he's like, what, you, you don't like that? So I didn't say anything. And I was like, no, I was just taken aback because I was surprised you got the same one. So then I, I was looking at it and I'm like, you know, it looks taller. I'm like, let me measure. It is taller. It's the same toilet, but they made it taller. Like they made it an inch Only and a half an taller. an inch and a half, but that was, that's over, you know, over 10 years later. 
I don't know. They still, they could it's not help themselves. It's toilet inflation. They could not help themselves. I guess people can't bend their knees and sit down in a toilet nowadays. I have to find this though, honestly. But this is a perfect example of when you're a homesteader, you can just do these, these little projects yourself and it saves a lot of money because if you call a plumber and get a price quote for them to come and completely change your toilet, I mean, if it's less than 200 bucks, I'd be surprised. Okay, here's this. Now, I cannot even read this. I'll, I'll start crying. So Scott has to read this. I'm not even joking. You read it. I can't read it. No, I'll people cry. people like to Oh, no. Oh, Don't no. show your screen to the, Here, to the camera. Here, take the phone. Honestly, I tried to read it to Scott. I started crying. I tried you, to read it to my sister. People want to see the drama. No, Scott, I'm serious. I'm not even going to do it unless you read it. I'm not <laughs> going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Okay, listen to this. It's My so grandson impressive. loves your show. He has mm -hmm. a uh, special needs that has rendered him nearly nonverbal. Mm -hmm. He loved the chickens that were in your yard and would say sort of chicken. Since they moved, they have no chickens. And now he says Becky over and over until we turn your show on. I just want you to know how important you are to a little boy with special needs. Thank you. I, you're getting choked up almost because he doesn't say the way he says it is Bicky. He didn't read it perfect. He he would say sicken with it, with just a C. He would say sicken for the chickens, and then he would say Bicky for my name over and over again. He didn't read it perfect. Oh my gosh, that like you can't read that without getting choked up. So the little boy says my name. He's like nonverbal, and he would say. Sicken and Bicky over and over until they put my show on for him. I wrote back that is the most precious thing ever. And I just, it was like, give him a kiss for me. I think that I was so sweet. And I have gotten more than one of those letters from kids that loved my show like that. That well, is they, so touching. They, they take you know, kids or people with special needs <clears throat> to like petting zoos and stuff because it's healthy. <clears throat> yeah, they like it. It's healthy to, you know, have, the, have the chickens, pet the donkey, you know, stuff like that is, is healthy for people with special needs. That's, that's good to do that. Yeah. And I think they have programs where they take people to, you know, petting zoos and stuff. Yeah, yeah. See, homesteading is good for them. I just think that is so sweet. Oh my gosh, so sweet. I, I have to say, like, I've been out in public and I've gotten recognized by kids. It's so, I've gotten recognized by adults, but when I get recognized by kids, I just think that is so, so cute. I got recognized by this little cute boy. He was this little chubby boy. And they, like, it was a little awkward, but they, like, followed me to the bathroom. But this little boy was standing out there. And he just, oh my gosh, he was just so happy to see me. And then he wanted his picture taken with me, of course. And I was like, oh, sure, sure, you know. He was just thrilled. Like, he got his picture taken with me. His mom was taking the picture. She's like, oh, he loved you, he loved you. And then he said his grandma was having problems with his chickens, the grandpa was. And I, I can't even remember now, but he told his grandpa the problem. He knew what the problem was because he watched my show. And I was just so, I was just laughing and smiling at him. And he told his grandpa, right, how to fix the problem. And I go, did it work? And he goes, yes, it did. And I was like, good boy. <laughs> I just thought that was so cute. It's like you have a deputy. <laughs> how he told his grandpa how to fix the problem. I'm sure grandpa was so impressed with him. It was, and he wasn't, you know, he was just a little boy. He wasn't that big. It wasn't like he was a teenager, you know what I mean? It was the cutest thing ever, though. But I'm just so, it just warms my heart when I see stuff like that. So I'm just like, go kids. I'm like, yay. So another lady um, wrote to me and through all this, you know, the kids are home. So she said that her kids are binge watching my, um, my, my shows, you know what I mean? So I just think that's so cute. They're home from school. So I guess they, I, I think that's good though. Cause I mean, what are they going to watch? There's so much garbage on TV. So I'm like, good, get those kids watching the homestead stuff. So hopefully they grow up and be little homesteaders, get them hooked when they're little. So <laughs> they grow up and they want to be homesteaders. So I, I do get a lot of uh, kids, tons of kids that um, email me 
and say that's what they're going to When I grow up, I'm going to be a homesteader and all that stuff. So that just thrills me when the, when the little ones are writing to me saying they want to be homesteaders. I'm like, when I say I'm starting a revolution, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Let's talk about what we're going to do at Homestead Park. How, how big is the chicken coop going to be? Um, well, I must say, when I go to Maria's house, my friend, and I redid her coop because she moved. She moved to a new place, and she, like, inherited this coop when she moved there. It was there. And um, it's so funny because when she moved there, there was, like, these old chickens there <laughs> that she got the chickens with the house when she moved there, which she already had chickens at her old place. In fact, she's the one that gave me Dum Dum. Um, she didn't want Dum Dum. So, anyway, so she moved there, and she had this coop, and it was it was. Well, if you watch the show on Amazon, you'll, you'll see the coop. That's the new oh, episode yeah, we that's didn't, coming soon. Oh, Almost yeah. ready. Scott's getting it ready now. Okay, well, I knew. anyway, we, we made a chicken checkup show out of this. So anyway, it's 16 by 16, the hen house only. I, I, I love that thing. I walk in there and I'm like, I want a big hen house like that. So I might build a 16 by 16 hen house at uh, Homestead Park. I don't know. I just love that huge hen house. Uh, you don't need a 16 by 16 hen house, but I don't know why. I just go in that hen house and I'm like, wow, this is a nice big hen house. <laughs> it's not really necessary, but it's just really nice. So I don't know. I just, I just might do that <laughs> just because <laughs> I like chickens and I don't know. I might just have a huge hen house. But the good thing about 16 by 16, if somebody wanted to follow the same design, yeah, they could just cut it in half and then it's 8 by 8. Yeah. I have an eight by eight, but I don't know. I might do a sixteen by sixteen. But you can have you can have quite a few chickens in a six. I don't. And it isn't even that I want a lot of chickens because I don't just, you know, I give all my eggs away, my extra eggs, and I do give them to both my boys. So and then I eat them. But even uh, above and beyond that. But the thing is, Homestead Park is huge, but I do like the chickens to free range and keep the bugs down. They do keep the bugs down for sure. So that does help. I don't know how many chickens I'll have over there. We'll see. I'll probably have some bantams because they're, they're so cute. I want to get some hens for little um, jewels. And then I'll have some regular size. I don't know yet. We'll have to play it by ear. <laughs> we don't want to get too many animals, though. <clears throat> we don't want to go crazy just because we have the room. You can, you know, I, I tell other people, don't do that. Don't that just, is important. I think if you have a big yard, yes. don't think you have to fill it up with animals. Yeah, because then, you know, you want to go away for the weekend or, the, you know, you want to go for away for a week. I like to ride. So I like to go camp riding, take my mule and go camping and ride. And so, you know, you got to get a pet sitter. So you don't want to be like, hey, you want to come over and pet sit for my zoo? And, you know, your pet sitter is going to be like... Yeah, if you pay me 500 bucks, I will. So then your, you know, your week's vacation ends up costing you a fortune. So you've got to keep all that in mind when you're building your homestead. If you want to stay in your homestead and never go away, well, of course, have a zoo. But if you want to go away. Okay, well, I think we're going to end for today. We're going to end for this week. And then we... Uh, don't you want to read the list off? Because we want to thank our Super Chat people. We appreciate it. And Amber and love Tammy. Love your support. Amber and Tammy. Carol. Carol. Angie. Angie. And Hot Stuff Timmy. Hot Stuff Timmy. And we love our channel members, too. We just appreciate your support through our channel members. And we love that you join our Sunday Bun Day. Happy. Amber says, thank you, Becky and Scott. You're welcome. And happy homesteading. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.